Hello and welcome to a new video. Today I'd like to talk about Scorn in relation to the two artists who are brought up most when discussing this game. You've probably heard their names already if you've read any article about the game or perused any comment section involving the game, none other than Bixinski and Giger. Now they aren't wrong, Scorn is very much inspired by these two, but I have a feeling that they're not quite sure why they make the connection. They know it's like Bixinski and Giger, but they're not able to quite put into words why that those two names come up when they see this game. And I'm going to show you that Scorn sometimes lifts images from these artists as well as use a lot of the same styles and aesthetics and themes that are present in these two masters' works. Now, I'm not the only one to make these connections. Other observant people have been able to spot these similarities as well, but I'd like to show you as many direct connections as I possibly can including some of the ones I found out specifically myself. One of the most well-known images of Scorn is this depressed, decrepit Scorn guy sitting upon a giant meat pillar, presumably well into the sky. He's lost, alone, isolated, and have given up completely, letting himself be eaten away by the environment beneath him. One of Beksinski's more well-known paintings also has tall pillars, even including strange haze beneath them, though they are much more frequent and a lot less lonely for the daisins stranded on them. Additionally, H.R. Giger has also drawn his own fair share of fleshy pillars, though these ones are a lot more crowded than even Beksinski's. Most of what we've seen in Scorn takes place in the same general area, and within that area, practically everything is covered in this red crap because of these bears. It's messy, it's probably squishy, and it's just fucking everywhere. Good grief. And what probably inspired them in part is this Beksinski painting featuring some venous red weed overtaking a car, and perhaps also this piece featuring some red foliage encompassing a building. And if you're wondering why I'm not naming these specifically, it's because Beksinski never named any of his pictures. But this red weed is due to these bears crawling around and just dying on the spot. And that too has some parallels with works from Giger and Beksinski. This one by Beksinski has some strange creature locked to a wall, slowly encompassing it with its long, bony, webby tendrils. And though Aliens was the first movie to officially show people trapped to walls glued by this alien resin, the idea actually started in Alien, with this idea called egg morphing, and sure enough, Giger has produced some concept art to show. But what about these creatures in the first place? Not just the crap they're covering everything in, but the beings themselves. Well, here's a concept art of the bear. Notice its shape, its backside is rather large compared to its head, and especially large compared to its frail little limbs. From Beksinski, we have this, which is vaguely similar in shape and stature. And as far as their clumping technique goes, we can see that in this Beksinski painting, featuring also very similar looking creatures, all crowding around, trying to vore themselves. Meanwhile, on Giger's end, here's the original concept art for the chestburster. The resemblance is fairly uncanny. A large, round body, a smaller head, and even smaller, frailer limbs. 
Speaking of giant heads, I think we all remember this scene from the Series X trailer. These massive, strange heads bleeding red weed out of their eyes. And a lot of people's immediate thoughts are, oh, this is like the giant heads from Prometheus. And I can certainly see why people would come to that conclusion. But considering Peklar's opinions of the Alien prequels, which I share, I'm going to doubt that. Instead, it's much more likely inspired by this Beksinski piece, a giant head bleeding a bunch of red weed out of its eyes. About as one-to-one -one as you can possibly get. In fact, Beksinski has done quite a few pictures focusing on giant, strange, almost alien, uncanny valley heads. Many of them in the process of rot and decay. The shot at the end of the Series X gameplay trailer I've mentioned before is very strange in other videos, where the rest of Scorn is very grounded, this is a portal to nothing. And something similar to this appears in a Beksinski painting. It's much larger than what we see in Scorn, and actually looks kind of grounded in some sort of reality, but is a doorway to a black void with some head on the very top of it. Now let's consider the opening shot to the first gameplay trailer. The very first thing you see is this decayed creature buried in the ground. It's rotted away long ago and is left to the environment. And then the camera slowly pans over it. You see a structure in the distance and when Clarity arrives, you see these sort of exhaust ports looking like tombstones haphazardly rising from the ground. And behind it all, this massive, decayed, derelict structure that has been broken and worn down for who knows how long. Here we can see something similar. In the bottom left is what looks like the remains of a dead creature, and behind this massive decaying structure. It even has a very similar color palette to what we see in the opening shot. And here we see another barren wasteland, a massive structure behind that looks like it's seen better days, and a bunch of pillaring tombstones jutting up from the ground. And if you're not convinced about the tombstones, here's a screenshot from Scorn from like an interview with one of the developers years ago that shows it a little bit better. One thing that's going to be present in Scorn are these sort of larger-than-life structures, these mammoth constructs of alien architecture that you're just in awe of seeing when you just look up at them. And Giger has done pieces like that, especially his NY City series, which features these alien metropolises that just scream isolation and unfamiliarity. And speaking of Giger, one of the most well-known aspects of his work is the eroticism. He's a pretty horny bastard. No, seriously, he really, really is. And yet, oddly enough, for most of the game's development so far, everything we've seen in Scorn has been completely devoid of any sexual innuendo. Maybe there's something you can kind of squint and turn your head and imagine is sort of phallic, but there was nothing at the level that Giger did. Until the Series X trailer, in which case Peklar showed this to the world, and the idea that sex didn't exist in the Scorn universe was completely obliterated. Thanks, I'm sure all the children who were watching that Xbox showcase really appreciated this shot. But a few things to pay attention to. But there's some things I want you to notice specifically. First, the ridges on the man's arm, specifically the back of it. Second, the woman's breast, specifically that vertical line crossing over the nipple. 
And finally, I want you to note that these two look old, decayed, and completely out of place with the environment behind them. Ridges on limbs is used fairly frequently in Giger's designs, such as this erotic xenomorph that was supposed to be in Alien 3, but we were fucking robbed. As for the structure of the breasts, it might have been inspired by his design for Sill from the Species movies. Or alternatively, this piece that can be found outside his museum, that also sports those same vertical lines. Just remove the spikes and it's a shoe-in. Concerning decaying lovers, Giger has done this piece here, one of his landscape paintings. But I think it's more likely to be inspired by this Beksinski here. It's a lot less raunchy than the Giger piece, which is sort of the vibe I get from the statue as well. Two lovers embraced, a feeling that scorned people simply lost. Yes, scorn is a very sad world, and I'm not talking about the strange machinery, the hostile creatures, or the disgusting architecture. But scorn seems to be a place that has lost a lot of what it means to live and to experience the joys of life. In previous videos, I likened scorn to the genre of cyberpunk, high-tech, low-life. Technology improves, but society doesn't, and scorn people have lost their humanity in the way. And in a different video, I speculated that the way scorn people reproduce have gone from sex as we know it, to growing people in molds, to eventually growing scorn people out of walls. It's an uncomfortable world, an unfriendly world, an unforgiving world. One where you're born in a strange flesh wall, perhaps with some basic memories and knowledge of how things work, and you might be immediately given an assignment to go do until you die. What other way could you explain the cruel ways that scorn men and machine are interlinked? It's painful, oppressive, it's dark transhumanism. Our future, bad ending. You're not an individual, you're a resource. You're something to be molded and changed to suit the purpose of the larger society. The only time that you might be noticed is if you start to malfunction, if something goes wrong, after all, isn't that the only time we might notice an individual cell when it starts to become cancerous and become a burden to the larger organism? And that's something we see in Giger as well, such as his famous birth machine here. These little creatures are nothing more than expendable ammunition. Here's a creature from some concept art for a film he wanted to make called The Tourist. Notice how he also has some painful looking invasive machinery permanently embedded into him. And just as scorned people are grown from walls, a replacement perhaps for the one scorned person who died a tragic death doing his job? So too did Giger envision life growing out of walls. Hardly the miracle of birth you've heard so much about. Another concept art that's very reminiscent of Giger is this one here. Giger tend to do a lot of pictures with a forward-facing figure in the center, and then next to him or her are two similar but not identical entities. There's this one here, with the center figure being this ghostly apparition, and beside it, different ladies in different poses, but fairly similar. Here's another one, front and center, this woman with large horns. Beside her, differing number of condom ghosts, two ladies with different heads and poses, then two structures, one 
showing all its pipes and one that looks like it's a bit more complete. For any Agony devs watching this, here's another example. Bapomit in the front, and to the side, two different colored ladies, one with a star facing upward, one with a star facing down. But that's not all we can see from this picture. Notice how the figure in the center has this rigid tube running from his mouth down to around where his heart would be. Now Giger liked his ribbed tubes. It can be found in everything from his environments to his creatures, such as his sandworm here. Specifically ones coming from their face, there's this example here, another piece to be found in his museum. There's also this one here that was inspired by the threat of nuclear Armageddon. And there's also this sorry bastard here, who kinda looks like he's growing out of a wall of his own. And though not tube and mouth related, I'd like to give special shoutouts to these two tourist concept arts that exemplify the cold industrial life that I think Scorn people lived. I wouldn't be surprised if Scorn is just Pecklar's desperate attempt to bring Giger's movie idea into the world of video games so that it might live in some form. But of course, when it comes to Giger and mouth tubes, I think nothing comes to mind more than the space jockey from the first Alien film, who also seems to exemplify the harsh, born to do some menial task until you die reality that I'm sure a lot of scorned people have faced in their short, brutal, cruel lives. One thing I've noticed about the scorned person in the center and the entity on the right is how evident the skull is. It looks like the skin on its head, if that even is skin, is so thin you can see the boniness underneath. The very first xenomorph actually had a visible skull underneath its dome. And fun fact, it was an actual skull. So alright, we've seen plenty of Giger. What about Beksinski? Well, there is this concept art here of Scorn Guy front and center. We're finally able to see that. As opposed to, you know, from the side and his sad lack of ass. But of course, we're not allowed to see too much. He has died, his flesh has hardened and started to flake away. What skin might have covered his head had turned to cartilage and skull. It actually looks a lot like this Beksinski painting right here, which shows the same sort of decay as we've seen in Scorn Guy. And not only do Scorn people decay in such a way, but their constructs as well, as if they were once living things in their own right who has perished long ago. That same sort of decomposition is also found in the law of Beksinski's architecture. Nothing left but thin, bony mesh of what was once a possibly vibrant piece of architecture. There are some lesser, looser parallels, like these three alien heads here that kind of resemble Necronom 2 by H.R. Giger. This pillar of meat here, in what's likely a very fleshy, organic environment, somewhat resembles the pillars of bone here that Beksinski has made. And as far as organic environments go, Giger has drawn his fair share. But I think to go any further would be nitpicking at this point, finding small details, that relate to other small details in the work of these great artists. I am curious though, when the final game comes out, what other parallels might we find? Be it thematically, or almost one-to-one -one lifts. Personally, I hope we get something that invokes the same feeling as this picture here. It would certainly fit the grandiose strange, esoteric nature of Scorn that has drawn people like me in, 
trying to figure out what the mystery is, trying to solve every small clue that's available. But in any case, we will probably find out this year. They say it's coming out 2021, though they've never been very good at nailing the entire year. And when we do, I hope I'll be able to decipher these enigmas further. Until then, I hope you enjoyed the video, that I've shown you why you've likely drawn parallels between this game and these artists, and otherwise entertained you. Take care.